Our project is the Seven Mindsets, and we're from Interpersonal Communications. When was the last time you really went out your way to be nice to someone? Have you ever done a random act of kindness just because? Hi, I'm Justin Hens, and I'm Tori Hankin. We're from the Lake Park Auburn SCCLA chapter. Our own personal observations, along with the overwhelming research we found, prompted us to take on this topic as our SCCLA project. We use the National FCCLA program, Stop the Violence, the Seven Mindsets, and Rachel's Challenge as our main resources for researching, planning, and organizing our primary activities. We also use the FCCLA planning process as a guide in organizing our activities and in planning our presentation for you today. Besides our own observations of concern, Tori and I found some discouraging statistics. Almost 30% of youth in the United States, or over 5.7 million, are estimated to be involved in bullying as either a bully, a target of bullying, or both. In addition, students in grades 6 through 10 report bullying others 13% of the time, while 11% report being bullied. Once we had identified our concerns, we began to set our goals. Since we used several resources for our research, we found that The Seven Mindsets to Live Your Ultimate Life by Scott Schickler to be the most user-friendly and easy for us to develop into a presentation model. As a brief overview, The Seven Mindsets to Live Your Ultimate Life include Everything is possible. Don't let negativity pull you down. Passion first. Focus on the things that mean a lot to you. 100% accountability. Be independent and own your life. We are connected. Respect others and they will help you down the road. Attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for all of your experiences. Live to give. Inspire others to be successful as well. And finally, the time is now. Take purposeful action every day. Our first goal was to reach peers with violence prevention education. We use the seven mindsets as our guide and outline. Our next goal is to bring in a keynote speaker to influence our student body with a wow factor. By bringing in a keynote speaker to address the issues of respect, our goal is to set the stage of acceptance of others through empathy. Specifically, we wanted to help faculty and students recognize how violence is not always physical and is many times portrayed through disrespectful clothing and accessories. Our final goal was inspired by... Rachel's Challenge to start a chain reaction of kindness. Seven of our fellow chapter members attended a Rachel's Challenge training activity at an FCCLA summit in November and were so inspired that they found a funding source to bring them to our school during National FCCLA Week on February 13th. This brings us to the plan part of our process. Tori and I got our start in motivation by attending the FCCLA Fall Region Rally in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. The keynote speaker, Judy Seagley, inspired us to make a difference in our own school by encouraging the students to develop a sense of self-respect. With our plans in place and our timeline established, we were ready to implement the ACT portion of our plan. We met with our advisors several times to help draft a presentation outline, which included a thank you note that each student wrote to it a person at school was inspired them. Then we presented to several high school classes, which helped us establish another, helped us establish a foundation for our next activity. Tori and I collaborated with other FCCLA members and National Honor Society students to work together on promoting and assisting the Rachel's Challenge event. Empathy is an important part of any nonviolence program, and they showed a video clip to build that empathy. Our hope was that by the end of the assembly, every student would stand in making a change of how they treat others in school. A chain reaction. As a follow-up, we had students sign a pledge banner, saying they would continue to help and not hurt others, because, because everyone has a story and none of us has a right to judge. We have actively publicized Rachel's Challenge in local and state news releases, including our own school website. We also showed the highlights of our presentation at our annual Rose Reception in May. While our project relates in part to all eight of the FCCLA purposes, we feel the following purposes are the most relevant. The sixth purpose is to provide opportunities for making decisions and for assuming responsibilities. We took on several activities that required us to balance our time, make decisions, and fulfill our commitment through our FCCLA involvement. Finally, we feel the first purpose, to provide opportunities for personal development and preparation for adult life, fits our project. FCCLA has many national programs that help us learn the various skills needed for a long life of decision making. We realize that in our project we are to promote collaboration, ethical behaviors, build trust, and listen to others' points of view. We have attempted our best to use the various resources we have available, including outside support agencies like Scott Schickler, Judy Siegley, and the Rachel's Challenge team to build a chain of support in our own school. We realize that we cannot solve all the interpersonal communication issues in our environment. We can start a chain, and hopefully that chain connects us with others whom we meet. Thank you for listening to, to our presentation.